Hey, thanks, Sam, and thanks for attending, everybody. Sonia and I are going to basically have a conversation this afternoon about the disparate impact theory of fair lending. And I find that I tend to even pronounce it a couple of different ways. So disparate, disparate, tomato, tomato. That's the focus of, of our presentation. It is an aspect of fair lending that can be very difficult to wrap your mind around. So we're going to start by going through the background. We're going to give you some context, both in terms of the relevant laws and also how this plays out. We're going to explain what it is, how to recognize it, the types of preventive measures that you might want to employ in order to avoid engaging in disparate impact discrimination. And from time to time, we'll offer our thoughts about training and monitor monitoring that you will want to be doing on this. It goes without saying that fair lending is a hot topic, but there was a, a report that the Department of Justice filed with Congress in 2013 that had a statistic so mind-blowing that they had it offset in a in a text box so that that it really popped and the statistic is that since the beginning of the Obama administration through the time this report was filed in July of 2000 13, the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division's Housing and Civil Enforcement Section, which is the one that handles the fair lending cases, obtained more than $660 million in monetary relief in fair lending settlements, and that's more than the previous 23 years combined. But Sonia, you and I talked about this yesterday, and as we did, we noted that one of those fair lending settlements was over $300 million, another one was over $200 million, and so we're going to be talking a lot about statistics today, and that's that's an example of how you kind of need to look below the surface of the numbers to see exactly what the substance of them is. So, Sonia, lead us off with some context about how we got where we are. Okay, great. We'll just briefly talk a little bit about the history of fair lending. When I think of fair lending, there's really five laws that um, – make it up, but I really divide them into two categories. The core components of fair lending is the Civil Rights Act, which we don't look at so much anymore, the Fair Housing Act, and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which are really the, the big laws that come into play with fair lending. And then contributing laws would be the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, HMDA, and CRA, the Community Reinvestment Act. Those two laws are really ways that financial institutions, examiners, people can determine if fair lending is occurring and if fair lending goals are being met. When you talk about fair lending discrimination, there are three types, and I just want to mention them briefly. You've probably heard them, and hearing them again might help you be focused where we are today. There's overt discrimination, disparate treatment, and then what we're going to be focusing our conversation on today, disparate impact. And fair lending has been around for a really long time, but we've seen a, a shift in it. Uh, during the Clinton and George W. Bush administrations, there was not a lot of enforcement, not a lot of focus on fair lending, and definitely uh, not a focus on disparate impact. In fact, in those administrations, the use of disparate impact was discouraged. Um, that all changed with the Obama administration. There was a huge shift in focus. Uh, he established um, a, through his administration, he established a financial fraud enforcement task force that 
focuses on a variety of financial frauds, but one of which is fair lending. With him, we also were uh, exposed to a new uh, attorney general and an assistant attorney general, Tom Perez, who feel that fair lending is a very important subject. They focus on it a lot. They um, are, are very aggressive in their efforts to enforce and they have moved from a more laid-back, easygoing approach to a more proactive and um, aggressive approach where they're filing record number of cases, and as we saw, they're having record number of, of um, amounts paid to, to satisfy fair lending findings or whatever. Um, Mary Beth, why don't you give us a little more detail? And, uh, and we'll be talking more about the CFPB and what it's doing in this arena. But to take a step back, we're going through the preliminary material in here rapidly because we just want to set the context in the background before digging into disparate impact. But when we use the term fair lending, we're generally talking about compliance with the two big federal laws, Fair Housing Act and Equal Credit Opportunity Act that Sonia mentioned a few minutes ago, and those are both laws that are designed to combat certain types of lending discrimination. Financial institutions have to comply with both the Fair Housing Act and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, but when you look at each one of them, you see that they have different scopes as its name reflects, the Fair Housing Act relates to, to housing and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act relates to all different kinds of credit. And as we'll see in just a few minutes, they also have different types of prohibited bases. And you know, the prohibited bases term is one that you hear over and over and over again. And, and um, when I talk to bankers, they'll, they'll sometimes call and they'll say, well, we have, we have this customer who really smells bad. He smells awful and he has a loan and he comes in and he makes his payments at the branch and we'd like to turn him down for a loan in the future or impose a condition that he make all of his payments by mail online or at the drive through but we're really worried about lending discrimination. Well, when you loan money, you discriminate all the time. Discrimination just means choosing between, making a distinction, and not all discrimination is illegal discrimination. Not all discrimination in lending is bad or is wrong. When you're looking at somebody and you're saying, oh, this person's credit history, income assets, debts, liabilities, debt-to-income ratio, make this person a wonderful credit risk and we're happy to make a loan to them and this person is a nightmare on financial street and no lender would touch them with a 10-foot pole because they have irresponsibly handled credit in the past, they don't work, they have debts up to their eyeballs. So what the fair lending laws do is say when somebody makes an application for credit or has a loan from you, all the decisions that you make in connection with that application for credit or the existing loan should be based upon credit worthiness. They shouldn't be based on extraneous factors that have nothing to do with the person's capacity and willingness to make the payments on the loans. So illegal discrimination is found when you deviate from just focusing on credit worthiness and you instead look at factors that should not be considered in credit decisions. So the fair lending laws draw out for you the boundaries within which you must operate. They set the parameters so that you know which bases you cannot use for making your decision. And Sam and Sonia and I were talking before the webinar 
began 